When I first heard that Amazon was selling cheap hand planes, I knew I had to try one. It's a basic Stanley Bailey clone of a number four smoother and it sells for $30. And for a tool that has to have a decent amount of precision to even function properly, I had to wonder, was it even worth $30? So I went ahead and bought one so I could find out for myself. It came with all the parts that you would expect to have. I really wanted to see how this would function directly out of the box. So the only amount of adjustment that I did to the plane is what you see right now. I took the lever cap off, pulled the blade and chip breaker assembly out, and put it back in to set the depth of the blade. I grabbed a small chunk of walnut to do my testing on. It has a little bit of figure, but nothing crazy. This is literally the very first pass I've taken with this plane, and it operated about as good as I expected it to. Out of the box, it was clear that the blade was very dull and that the chip breaker was doing next to nothing. What I was doing could not properly be called smoothing the wood, more like hacking away at it to make it smaller. The shavings that were coming off were very thick and rough, and while a nice fine shaving is not the goal when you're planing a board, it is indicative of leaving a nice surface behind, which this plane was not doing. This is what a properly functioning smoothing plane looks like. This is a Lee and number no. 4 smoother that I've had for about 8 years. They're made in Maine, and aside from a few boutique tool manufacturers, Lee Neeson makes some of the best hand planes that you can buy brand new. Now, like I said, I've had this plane for eight years, so I can't show you exactly what it was like fresh out of the box, but I can tell you it worked just about this good. As a basis of comparison, here's one of the shavings I pulled with the Amazon plane. As you can see, it's at 17 hundredths of a millimeter thick. Here's a shaving with the Lee Neeson plane, almost a tenth of a millimeter less. And here's what the board looked like after I smoothed it out with the Lee Neeson plane. So right now, my question is, can I get this Amazon plane to perform like this? So to start off with, the lever cap. The lever cap doesn't have a lever. It's got a screw. The machining of the screw itself was very sloppy. Cosmetically, the lever cap didn't look great, but it was functional. As a comparison, here's the lever cap off the Lee Nielsen. It's made out of bronze, it's nicely machined, and it will hold the blade and chip breaker assembly very well. Now here's the blade, which is also known as the iron, and chip breaker assembly off the Amazon plane. Out of the box, the chip breaker wasn't even close to properly adjusted, but that didn't really matter because the lower mating surface on it was so rough that it wasn't properly contacting the blade anyway. When I separated the chip breaker from the plane, it became really obvious that this front edge, which should be almost knife sharp on its own, was very blunt and rounded over. And the entire part has some sort of chrome coating, presumably to prevent corrosion, but the overall effect was that it was just hiding very bad manufacturing. And the steel definitely had some flex to it, which was contributing to some blade chatter that I had earlier. As a comparison, here's the iron and chip breaker off the Lee Neeson, and you can see how closely I have the chip breaker set to the edge of the iron. And the chip breaker itself is much beefier than the one on the Amazon plane, though this is one of the areas where Lee Nielsen has improved upon the original basic design. And here you can really see the difference between the two, and the problem with the Amazon one is that chip breaker is just too dull and blunt to properly do its job. That blunted edge will allow chips and plane shavings to get underneath it and it will screw up the way the blade's being held against the wood. Now the blade itself is pretty thin and cheap. Out of the box, it does not have any kind of good cutting edge on it. But to be fair, just about every edge tool needs sharpening out of the box. As far as the frog and sole go, it is not as bad as it might seem. The handles are actually made out of wood, which is nice. But that's sort of where my positive comments stop. The depth adjust is sloppy and all the machining is very rough. Now aside from having a very dull blade, one of the issues with this plane right out of the box is that the frog does need to be adjusted. The basic design of the frog and the way it's adjusted is exactly the same as it's been on this type of plane for over 100 years. You loosen up these two screws and then you use this little screw on the bottom to advance the frog forward or back. And the reason you want to be able to do this is because there's a few different factors that affect how well the plane functions. The sharpness of the blade is the biggest, but how well the plane actually removes material from the wood comes down to how deep the blade is going and how big the mouth of the plane is. 
If you get huge thick rough shavings with a really sharp blade, either the blade is set too low or the mouth is too wide or both. So at this point I've adjusted everything I can on the plane to get it in the most proper configuration that it should be, but the plane was actually performing even worse than it did straight out of the box. The now narrower mouth was just clogging up with the dust that this thing was pulling off of the board. Starting off, the most important thing to do to make this plane function properly is to sharpen the blade. How to properly sharpen a plane iron is an entire video unto itself. Sharpening nerds could argue for days about the best way to sharpen any sort of edge. The fact is, any edge tool is going to need a good sharpening system to go with it, and how you choose to do that really comes down to how much money you want to spend. In this video, I'm using water stones and a Tormek grinder because that's what I have. If you're the sort that bought a $30 hand plane to save some money, you might want to look into something called the scary sharp method. There's plenty of tutorials on the internet and you can do all the sharpening I'm doing here only using sandpaper, so it's definitely a cheaper alternative. The fact is, it really doesn't matter how you sharpen the blade so long as you can produce a good, sharp, consistent edge. As far as I'm concerned, if I can shave with it, it's sharp enough to plain wood. And yeah, I know this is gross. So with the blade good and sharpened, I also needed to fix the chip breaker. I used some 220 grit sandpaper on a nice flat ceramic tile. For most of the tune-up on this plane, you really need something that's really good and flat. Plate glass would be best, but this ceramic tile was only $4 and it worked out well. I carefully sanded the bottom of the chip breaker so the mating surfaces where it touches the blade would be perfectly flat. This honestly didn't take very long. The metal that the chip breaker is made out of is pretty soft. The chrome coating started to come off, so I suspect this is going to be one of the first pieces that start to rust. So if I keep this plane, I'll have to keep it well waxed. After about two minutes, I had the chip breaker where I wanted it, and I attached it to the iron. I set it back about two millimeters from the edge of the blade. This is about as best as I can show you this on camera. There aren't any gaps left on the mating surface where the chip breaker touches the blade, and there's no longer the rounded edge where dust and stuff can get stuck in there. After sharpening the blade, I put everything back together to test it out. After the good sharpening, I was able to start pulling some pretty decent shavings. As I was using the plane, I could really feel the blade chattering on top of that walnut, and if you look close, you can see all the little ridges where the blade was vibrating as it moved across the surface of the wood. The Amazon plane also took way more effort to push across the board. Here I was using the Amazon Basics plane for about 30 seconds or so before I switched over to the Lee Nielsen. It was a night and day difference. The sole of the Lee Nielsen is much smoother, so there was a lot less friction. Most of this is down to the poor finish quality on the sole itself, but there is another problem. The sole itself is pretty far from being flat. I glued some 120 grit sandpaper to my big ceramic tile, and then I got to work flattening the bottom of this plane. This took a while. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that the blade is not installed right now, and that's actually a mistake on my part. When you're flattening a plane sole, you should really have the blade and leather cap installed with the blade retracted so that the stresses that are on the plane are exactly the same as they would be while you're actually using it on wood. I spent probably about an hour smoothing the bottom of this. I started at 120, like I said, and then I moved on to 180 and then 220. I didn't go any further than that. Not only did this process make the bottom of the plane nice and flat so it wouldn't rock back and forth anymore, but it also made the bottom nice and smooth so it made it a lot easier to use. Now this is nothing you would ever have to do on a Lee Nielsen quality plane, but for 30 bucks, I guess I can understand why they didn't run this thing through a surface grinder. It honestly didn't take very long to get the bottom of this plane flat. Here you can see some of the casting defects in the mouth, which I don't think really were affecting performance, and also this hollow area in the middle of the sole that I didn't bother to go far enough to fully remove. The fact is, if the area around the mouth and the sides and the back is completely flat, that hollow isn't going to be a problem. I also covered everything in paste wax, which is important to prevent corrosion on any exposed metal, but also to help reduce friction and make using the plane easier. Now with everything put back together, this plane was performing the way a tool should. Now the Amazon plane actually felt pretty good to use in my hands, and the blade chatter was completely gone, but I think that was mainly due to me not having the lever cap tightened down as much as it should have been before. 
check out how good this surface finish came out. Moved on to flattening a larger, wider board. The plane continued to perform pretty well, but I could feel as I proceeded that the blade was getting a little duller a lot quicker than I would hope for. And due to the pretty sloppy machining in the lever cap screw as well as the depth adjustment, I suspect that if you use this plane for a long time, you're going to be constantly adjusting things to keep it where you need it to be. Like any kind of hand tool, using a hand plane requires lots of practice to build a good technique. And additionally, there's limitations on each hand plane, and that's why there's so many different sizes and varieties. Honestly, what I'm doing here, I should be doing with a jack plane first and then using the smoother. But I think with an Amazon Basics hand plane that you've put enough time and effort into, you could easily flatten a board of this size, no problem. To this stage, all told, I've spent maybe $50 on this plane. 30 for the plane itself, about four for that big tile, and then the rest for assorted amounts of sandpaper and WD-40. I spent maybe two hours, three max, tuning it up. Comparing this to the $340 that a brand new Lee Nielsen number four would cost you, this would seem like a great value. But ultimately, I don't think that the Amazon Basics plane is an actual tool, it's a project. All right, so starting with the lever cap, which isn't really a lever cap because it's got this screw. Casting is pretty junk on the bottom. It's got some sort of coating on the top, which I'm sure as soon as it chips off will begin to rust. The machining in the screw is sloppy but it does hold. Moving on to the iron and chip breaker. It is definitely a cheap, cheap blade. And though it was able to, I was able to sharpen it up enough, it didn't hold an edge very well. But this is something that's easily replaceable. The chip breaker after flattening this edge and sharpening it up, did work like it's supposed to, but the chrome covering is peeling off and like the cap iron, I suspect this will start rusting in the areas where I've removed the coating. And like that other screw on the lever cap, the machining is pretty garbage. Now, I've seen worse frogs than this. It's at least a cast iron frog. The machining on this could have been a lot better. These mating surfaces on the bottom are pretty rough, but with a file, they could be cleaned up. The depth adjustment moves freely, but it's kind of sloppy. This yoke moves around a lot and I found I had to usually run it out quite a bit to get the blade set to, at the right depth. And at this point, it's almost not even doing anything. This piece right here, pretty loose. And perhaps with an offset screwdriver, getting that tightened up would be easier. And like all the other machining, the tolerances just aren't there, but it's not that bad. On the sole, you can see this hollow where I didn't flatten it, how rough the machining was on it. After smoothing it out and flattening, much better, much nicer, but out of the box, pretty bad. The casting on the mouth leaves a bit to be desired. These corners are pretty rough, but a little work with a file could clean that right up. The handles are actually wood, or the tote, I should say, and handle is actually wood, which is nice, because as I understand it, some um, 
Stanley is now using plastic and they are very tightly attached. The frog adjustment works. It's not great, but it works. I was able to get it into the right position to make it work. Here's an example of how loose the depth control mechanism is. That's the Amazon Basics plane on the right, as compared to the Lee Nielsen one on the left. So I'll be honest, starting out on this video, I wanted to hate this hand plane. I really wanted to hate it. Strangely though, I don't. I mean, am I ever going to use it again? Probably not. Not when I have the good planes that I do have. But for $30, I was able to make this thing functional without too much effort, and that is, to me, a sign of pretty good value. But if I were in the market for a cheap hand plane, I would start off by looking for pre-World War II Stanley Bailey planes at flea markets or something like that. Restoring an old hand plane is still a project, but at least you're starting off with something that was initially much better quality than what this plane was coming out of the factory. I do think though that for somebody starting out in hand tools who just wanted to get their feet wet and really learn what makes a plane work properly, this would be alright. For me though, I think I will be turning this into a scrub plane, which is really the perfect use for a $30 plane. Anyway, that's the Amazon Basics hand plane. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.